Okay, last week was a little bit, a um, little, little darker than what we normally do. Uh, this week, I wanted to have some fun and do something that's kind of a play on something we've done in the past. We've done a lot of videos about different fish for different tank sizes. Uh, in fact, we've got a loop of them playing up here on this TV up here, in case you're wondering what that is. But we've done uh, all the different, not all the different sizes, but a few different sized yeah. aquariums. Today, I want to combine all of that. And I want to give our favorite fish for the eight most popular sized aquariums. Okay. Are we ready for that? It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll start off with the small tanks and then we'll go up to the heavy hitters. We're going to start off with the five gallon tank. What is your favorite fish for a five gallon aquarium? I mean, is that even a question? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's the dumbest question that's ever been asked on this channel. My favorite fish for a five gallon aquarium would be a beta. And I have kept them in 10 gallons too. I, I, I recommend five being the minimum, uh, but I, I think, yeah, definitely a female beta to be specific. And I, I just think that anything else is probably stretching it. I, I don't know. I know there's other fish that can go in a five gallon aquarium, but it's almost five. like five gallons are made for betas. It, it, it is. It's like five gallons for a beta, one snail. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, because I knew, I mean, we're in the business of betas, but mm -hmm. I, I knew you were going to take that because common sense. Uh, so I, it, it was pretty easy for me to pick another fish that I love in five gallon tanks. And that is the Celestial Pearl Danio. These are okay. absolute micro fish. They're teeny tiny. They're like the size of a grain of rice, maybe a little bit bigger. They are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. uh, my vision is not the best anymore. I'm getting a little older and I have to stare at things for a little bit sometimes for them to come into focus. Um, and, and CPDs, that's what I call them, CPDs. Mm -hmm. Uh, you really do have to focus in on them because they're beautiful, but they're really small. So they're difficult they to see, but um, pretty hardy, easy to keep, great for a five gallon aquarium. Uh, their leopard spots are just absolutely gorgeous. I love this fish. Um, not my favorite Danio. I've got others, but I love CPDs. They're adorable and perfect. If you're not going to have a beta, perfect for a five gallon tank. Yeah, I, I, I can't disagree with you on that one. <laughs> okay, so now we move on to the 10 gallon tank. Your favorite size aquarium should be an easy one for you. Go. I decided that I wanted to talk about endlers because I think endlers are just the perfect beginner fish uh, and perfect for a 10 gallon aquarium. These these fish are hardy. You can't you can't. Well, I shouldn't say you can't kill them because I'm sure there are people out there that have. <laughs> but they're the perfect beginner fish because they're so hardy. Because their water parameters are so. It, you don't have to really tone in on a specific you know temperature. They're fine if you're. If your home is 71, 72 naturally, then they may be fine without a heater. I would still get a heater. I would still get one just to be on the safe side because you never know winter time comes and, and you your heat goes out. Or Well, I guess your heater would go out too. But anyways, anyways. Fish keeping 101, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and those are the perfect beginner fish for a 10 gallon aquarium. They're beautiful. Some of these fish, we're going to have to go ahead and mention that they can also uh, cross, meaning you can put endlers in a five gallon tank too. So, yeah, you can. But for 10 gallon, your favorite is going to be that, and that's perfectly fine. But And the reason uh, why is because they're, they're live bearers. I want to give them that extra few gallons in case they, you know, they have will some produce. babies. Yep. <laughs> And on the topic of live bearers, my fish for the 10 gallon tank is also going to be another live bearer. If you're new to this, you're just coming in the door, you don't really know what a live bearer is. This means they give birth to live free swimming fish. They don't lay eggs, just a 
fish pops out and they start swimming away. It's the most adorable thing in the world. Uh, there are a lot of live bears, but my favorite for a 10 gallon tank is gonna be another live bear, but it's not gonna be guppies. You're thinking, I'm gonna say guppies, love guppies, adore mm -hmm. guppies, but I chose to go a little off of what you would automatically think, I would say. And I chose liar tail mollies. Okay. Love these. There is a particular shot. I'm going to put it up over top of me right now because it's something that I got at House of Tropicals a long time ago. Uh, and it is the black and yellow liar tails. And they are absolutely gorgeous. I've used this footage in so many videos in the past. I love this fish just like you said with the endlers. And it's pretty common with a lot of community type fish. Very hardy, very easy to keep. They're live bears, they're always gonna be producing unless you only put males or only females in there. Uh, so you're gonna feel like a pro because you have all these new babies, these free fish that are popping out all the time. You're gonna feel like the best fish keeper in the world and have some really gorgeous fish at the same time. Easy on water parameters. You just, you just can't lose. Liar tail mollies for the win. There or you go. FTW, as the children would say. Not the children, the kids. Get off my lawn! <laughs> yes, there are 15 gallon aquariums out there. In fact, I've got one right there, but we're not going to talk about 15 gallons today. We're going to jump from 10 gallon straight up to 20 gallons. Again, we're kind of covering the, right. the most common aquarium sizes that you see in this hobby. So the next one is 20 gallon. What you got? I've got two different kinds of tank setups as far as 20 gallons go because I couldn't, I couldn't choose. I, I personally like for a 20 gallon pencil fish with ember tetras, a schooling pencil fish where they're up top or midway with some ember tetras. It's just one of my favorites. And I think that if you want a lot of activity, you want a lot of stuff going on in the tank, get some plants in there for everyone to zoom around in and just let them go. I mean, they're beautiful. They, they're different. Pencil fish are different. Uh, Ember tetras mixed up with the pencil fish, just a lot of activity. They're hardy and it's, it's to me a win-win. You got a bonus there because yeah. she gave you two fish. That's but beautiful. But that is not what I meant by two different tank setups as far as a 20 gallon goes. Oh. I have to address something. We get a lot of uh, questions. I, I especially get this question all the time about what size tank and how many female betas should go together. And okay, so I'm just gonna say it again. 20 gallon aquarium, five female betas, a group of dithers, you know, pick a dither of your choice that, that can go with betas, that get along with betas, you know, cardinal tetras, something along those lines. But I would, I would recommend at a minimum a 20 gallon aquarium for a sorority. And I, I do not recommend though that you start this if you are a beginner fish keeper. Not at all. You need to have a little bit more experience and know what beta is like and uh, just you need to have more experience. Do your research if you ever want to do that but I just thought I'd throw it out there because I get asked that question a lot as far as what is the minimum tank size for a beta sorority and it's a 20 gallon in my opinion. Got a bonus there, absolutely. Uh, when it comes to 20 gallons for me, this was another one that was the, the biggest no-brainer of all time because I absolutely adore these fish. We've got a bunch of them right now, not in a 20 gallon, but we've got a bunch of them, and that is the Rummy Nose Tetra. Oh, I love those. Love this fish, bright red head, that black and white striped tail. Okay. They're just absolutely amazing. One of my favorite fish in the entire hobby. I've said it so many times on this channel, and I am not afraid to admit it, that I love me some Rummy Nose Tetras. They're a unbelievable schooling fish. They're just gonna swarm around yes. all over the place. Uh, even in your discus tank, 
There's a whole bunch of them in there with the discus. They don't go anywhere even near the discus, even at no. feeding time. They just go off they and better. they do their own thing and they go back and forth. And it's, it's beautiful to watch. And it's also a beautiful, beautiful fish to watch do it. So I cannot get enough rummy nose tetras. If I could have a tank full of them, a big giant tank, maybe convert this one to a just oh, wow. 350 rummy nose tetras in there. I'm not gonna do that, but that sure would be cool. Okay, so the next one is another very, very common size. And it's one that's always kind of thrown me for a loop. I don't know why they didn't just go to 30 gallons, but it's a 29 gallon tank. Very common in the hobby. A lot of first time fish keepers start out with a 29 gallon tank because it's big enough to make a statement, but not so big that it fills up an entire room like some of the tanks we're gonna talk about coming up. Uh, I just set up a 29 gallon tank. It's right there. I think you know what fish I'm gonna put on the list for that, but I'm gonna <laughs> let you go since we've been doing it in order this way. I'm gonna let you go first and say what your favorite fish is for a 29. I think a very beautiful tank, as far as a 29 gallon goes, is a planted, really nice scaped, planted 29 gallon with a couple German blue rams. Get, nice. get a pair, you know, a male and a female, kind of keep the balance there, and then get about eh, 15, 16 cardinal tetras. I love it. I just can't imagine anything prettier for a 29 gallon tank. I like the way you think. One, I want to mention something real quick because this is not a video that is uh, German blue rams require a 29 gallon tank no. because they don't. Mm, yeah. uh, just like the pencil fish and ember tetras, you don't have to have them in a 10 gallon tank. The ember tetras could go in a five gallon tank and be completely fine. I just want to be clear about that. We're not giving you the, the fish that require that size. We're just saying what our favorite fish are for those size right. tanks. And, and what would work because hey bigger is better right and i chose the german blue rams as far as like just two and them being a pair because they they can get a little aggressive when they want to start breeding so just to keep the aggression down that's why i suggested a pair and not like you know 10 of them yeah german blue rams maybe not a beginner fish but uh but still not that difficult to keep right. and, uh, and absolutely spectacular. They're wonderful. Okay, now on to mine. It is one of my new secret obsessions. I absolutely love these fish, particularly for a 29 gallon. And yes, I am totally biased because I just set this up. It's Congo Tetras. Shocker. My Congo Tetras <laughs> might not be that magnificent right now, but I'm gonna put some footage up of some Congo Tetras that are spectacular. This is just the most striking fish ever. The transparent fins with the white trim around it is just unbelievable. I absolutely love them. Uh, the body of the fish is not anything spectacular. It's all about the fins with this fish. I love them, love them, love them, and I can't wait for mine to get some size to them and uh, mature and get those special fins. But uh, yes, Congo Tetras, easy to keep, beautiful, cheap, not easy to find. I mean, they're, they're not the most popular fish out there, uh, mm -hmm. but when you find them, you'll be glad you did because they are wonderful. And they're pretty neat. Okay, so you would think that the natural progression would be for us to go from 29 to the 40 gallon aquarium, the 40 gallon breeder, but we're not gonna do that because we're gonna jump straight up to the 55 only because 40 breeders, they're popular, but they're not common. Like you don't see them everywhere. It's usually the hardcore fish keepers are gonna keep 40 gallon tanks, people that are setting up fish rooms and stuff like that. So we're just gonna skip that one and go up to the 55 and I'm gonna go out of order here. And there's a very particular reason why. We <laughs> actually took note, we made the list and we took note of what our favorite fish were gonna okay. be for each individual tank. And we showed those lists to each other and you totally copied me. I did so not copy you. I, I just, I kind of agreed with you. I'm gonna go first because it, I, I said it first. And you that did. is you did. angels. Yes. Uh, this is another fish that I am gaga over. I love 
angelfish I always have. I've done seven part video series about angelfish and breeding them with my friend Dave Warren. Um, just a magnificent fish, great fish for beginners uh, because they are really, really hardy. There's people, every time we say that, there's people that argue with us because they're like, yeah, but they're so mean. Well, that can be true, but then again, almost all fish in this hobby, you can get some bad ones, but it is more common with angels. You can have them that can get a little bit feisty, but that's usually During because breeding. they've paired off and they want to breed. And that's kind of true with a lot of fish in this hobby. Okay. Uh, but when you talk about an easy fish to keep, goes great in a 55 gallon aquarium, lots of options for tank mates, and they're just magnificent. It is angelfish all day long. Now go ahead and copy me. It's your turn okay, now. Okay, but the thing <laughs> is I said angelfish as well, but I added tank mates. I really like zebra danias with with angels. I think it's fun to watch them zoom around mm -hmm. and the angels just kind of do their thing and they're fast enough to where the angels aren't going to pick on them or bother them. And I just think it's a beautiful, a beautiful tank when you have angels, different angels. It doesn't even have to be the same ones. Mm -hmm. You could even g use a 55 as a grow out tank for angels. Sure. Oh, that's so pretty to have a bunch of little baby angels in there. There are not a lot of fish in this hobby that can stand completely on their own. And what I mean by that is like these Oscars behind me, magnificent, beautiful, big, bold fish. You can have them in an aquarium with no decor and they look fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you probably should with Oscars because they're going to redecorate the tank on their right. own anyway. But uh, angels, they can be the main focal point in an aquarium. You don't need anything else in there because they're that bold that that shape that they have with those long fins and the flowing fins and all of the dangly things that hang down on them make them the perfect fish for somebody like me that's kind of a minimalist when it comes to decorating aquariums i like it to be kind of sparse i don't like a lot of decor i like looking at people's heavily decorated oh, aquariums yeah. but too. for my personal taste i like it to be just kind of bare bones i like the fish to be the focal point and no fish is, is better at being the main focal point than angels. So, yep, no brainer. So now moving on to the 75 gallon aquarium, again, the next one on the list for the most common sizes. What is yours? We'll go back to the original order. What is your favorite fish for a 75 gallon? My favorite fish for a 75 gallon is going to be Mbunas, but it's going to be the smaller ones, not the larger ones, like the Demasoni and the Rusties and the Yellow Labs. And have a nice little mixture of them of 10 to 12, you know, the ones that don't get any more than three to four, five inches. I just think it's a beautiful tank. You don't have to have a whole lot. You can just have some rocks, you know, scaped here and there. So they have their own little spaces. And like I said, and Boonas, but the smaller ones, not the ones that get really big. You can have 12 Demasoni in there, and that's just gorgeous. I mean, I would suggest mixing them up, making them, you know, make, make a variety, have a little different stuff going on in there. But yeah, easy. You did a video a long time ago shopping for embunas at oh, our store. So fun. Putting a bunch of embunas into a 75 gallon tank. That was a lot of fun. That was and, a lot of fun. Um, once again, you copied me, but uh, yes and no, because I did, I mean, I'm extremely biased here when it comes to this list because almost all of these I have, except for the liar tail mollies. But uh, for the 75, I went with just straight up yellow labs. If you want to know what that looks like, folks, just look behind this beautiful woman right that's sitting across from me. Uh, that's not a 75 gallon aquarium, but that's what an aquarium would look like if it was full of nothing but yellow labs. This is one of the most striking fish in the hobby. It is as bright as you're ever going to see. They are easy to keep. They will breed for you. I mean, unless you're able to get them from somewhere that is can, can determine whether they're males or females, which can be tough with these fish. Uh, if you went with just one male, 
like all males or all mm -hmm. females, obviously you're not gonna have the breeding there. But to me, that's part of the fun of it, putting a bunch of these in there. They stay smaller right. for Imbunas. Uh, and the fact that they can just reproduce in there and give you a tank just full of super bright yellow fish, how can you lose? I mean, they are yeah. just, I've loved these fish ever since I started keeping fish. They've been one of my favorites. And you don't have to look at them for longer than five seconds to understand why. I agree, they're beautiful. Moving on, again, we're gonna skip another size, uh, and it's one that we actually have. We have a 90 gallon down in the basement with angels and Daniels in it, go figure. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and skip that one and go to the 125 because 90 gallons, they're out there, but they're not as common. And we don't want this video to be three hours long. So 125 gallon, I think I know what you're gonna say, but go ahead. What can I say? I'm a little biased because <laughs> my 125 has discus. So I, I recommend discus. I mean, that's my opinion. Other people might think, oh, 125, I can think of something better to put in it. But I like my discus in there. I have, um, I have this, the schooling rummy nose and uh, bristle nose playco in there. And the decoration is just a piece of driftwood uh, a couple actually a couple pieces of driftwood but i like that the discus are the main the main attraction to that tank and it gives them so much more room to be able to grow and to do their thing and they, they go all over the place and they get along and sometimes they'll pair up and and try to breed here and there but I do have the rummy nose in there, so we've never had success with that, but I could always pull them out and, and, and breed them, but I went against that. I decided not to do that, but yeah, 125, I think is perfect for discus. So for me, with the 125, uh, it, it was a no-brainer, just like all of the other ones here. This, for me, is the perfect tank for peacocks and haps. African cichlids is kind of how we cut our teeth on YouTube. That's what we became known for. We were breeding peacocks and haps and imbunas at the time. Uh, no tank screams, it needs to be an African cichlid tank more than a 125. Right. Uh, and there's no peacocks or haps that can't go in a six foot long 125. So yeah, perfect for them. Some of these fish, some of the haps get pretty big, mm -hmm. uh, but that's okay because they can get as big as they need to get in a six foot long 125 gallon tank so it's it's perfect for that but that's one of the beautiful things about 125s is that they're just so many fish are perfect for a 125 oh, yeah. or lots of fish Definitely. so yeah it's uh it's a no-brainer for me i didn't even have to put any thought into it whatsoever peacocks and haps get you a bunch of bunch of venustis or uh, uh, living stone eye or just a bunch mm. of peacocks or something all the different colors you're going to have one absolute magnificent tank so oh yeah definitely i agree with that 100 percent. i well, mean there's nothing better than a tank that just has all kinds of different colors in it and the the fish are bigger they're not like little teeny mm -hmm you know, community fish, so. So many people will describe a peacock and hap tank to being the closest thing to a saltwater tank, right. as far as the colors go, right. that you'll ever find in the freshwater hobby. So yeah. Uh, so again, as we're talking about no brainers, let's move up to the last size on our list. And again, this one for me, I'm gonna go ahead and go first. Okay, go ahead. On this one, because uh, it's the biggest no brainer of all time. Everybody knows exactly what I'm gonna say. When we jump up to a 150 gallon tank, you know I'm gonna say Oscars. I mean, that's just, what else am I gonna say? This is where the Oscar is gonna really shine. They're gonna be able to grow to their full potential. Right. They'll grow to their full potential in a tank smaller than a 150, but a 150 is really gonna be where they're just gonna just love their life. They're gonna be so happy. They're gonna grow really big, really fast. Look at that guy, come on. I mean, how could you not love that fish? I'm on a mission to make them the most popular fish in the world. And uh, they so pretty much already are. But anyway, it'll be nice. I can take credit for it in a couple of years, even though they're already as popular as they are. But love Oscars, love their puppy dog nature. I love everything about them. I've done videos about them. I just, I could talk 
all day long about Oscars, but I'm gonna stop because this video is already long enough and you already knew you were watching this video and you were like, when we get to the big tank, John's gonna say 150, or yeah, John's gonna say Oscars. <laughs> anyway, I'm rambling. What is your fish for a 150? Okay, so I feel like I'm repeating myself here, but my, my recommendation, what I like for a 150 is all size Mbunas, not just your smaller Mbunas, but any Mbuna you want, because then you're not worrying so much about, oh, should I stick a bumblebee in there or should I stick a Sokolovi in there? You can put all of them in there, but you still wanna make sure you have plenty of places for them to hide or whatever, you know, their caves and, and you wanna have the right setup because there are some that get larger than others but if you balance it out the right way you can have a successful Mbuna tank and it can be even prettier than a happen peacock tank wow then <laughs> there's fighting words but the good thing about a 125 and a 150 is let's face it we are confining fish that if they were born in the wild we're both sitting here like this but if they were in the wild which none of these fish have been most of them in the hobby we don't have any that have ever been in the wild but if they were in the wild they would have rivers and huge lakes to swim around in and we're confining right. them to these small boxes so a 125 a 150 that's where you're kind of it's like I don't know, it's almost like you're doing the best for these fish. This is why I say, to me, all tanks would be six feet long. I know that's not realistic, but this is where every single fish in the hobby, except for the ones that get too big for 125s and 150s, really have the chance to shine. I'm glad that you used Mbunas again, because it's really a spectacular thing to see a 150 full of Mbunas. Mm -hmm. or perhaps a 240 like you see behind Lisa here. Uh, did I say 250? I meant 240. You full, said 240. Okay, full of Mbunas. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing to see. You can have them in big numbers and it's just spectacular. But all fish, I, I would love to see a 150 gallon tank full of Cardinal Tetras. It right. would just be a magnificent thing to see. I'm not gonna try to go on a crusade to make everybody get these big giant tanks, but I just think it's kind of the best thing for mm -hmm. any fish in this hobby, again, except for the ones like Arapaimas and right. <laughs> stuff like yeah, that exactly. that get too big for it. But anyway, this was a lot of fun. Uh, these again are our favorite fish for these right. uh, size tanks. They're not like rules that you have to have this size tank for these. It's just what we would love to see in these tanks. I hope it's given you some ideas of what you can put in whatever size aquarium you have. And if you have something that's in between one of the tanks that we talked about, just go with whatever is the yeah. smaller of them and, and you'll be good. So yeah. yeah, this was a lot of fun to do. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.